The previous video introduced the concept of controllability. What we're going to do now is extend this and give a more useful um, way of checking. So, in the previous video, we introduced controllability and we said what this meant is the ability to achieve any desired x of t by a suitable choice of u of t. And we used eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions in order to test for controllability, but in general, these are hard to compute and certainly not a paper and pen exercise. So what this video will do is introduce a simpler test. And it is simpler to implement, but we should note the background proof is perhaps less straightforward. So a reminder then of what controllability means. It means that if you have an arbitrary start point or initial condition x of 0 and an arbitrary end point or desired target x of t end, then you can think up a u of t, an input signal, which will get you from x of 0 to x of t end. So no matter what x of 0 are, what x of t end are, you can always think of a u of t that will achieve this. If you can do that, the system is controllable. And if you can't, the system's not controllable. So remark, a system given in control canonical form is always fully controllable. And we'll revisit this at the end of this video. What we need to do now is come up with a convenient test of controllability, because using eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions is not convenient. What we'll find is that you can test for controllability by testing the rank of a so-called controllability matrix. And the definition of this is very simple. Here it is. You see the controllability matrix, you take the matrix B from the state-space model, you take AB, where A and B are obviously the state space parameters, A squared B, and so on, all the way up to A to the N minus 1B, where N is the number of states. If this matrix is full rank, then the system is controllable. And obviously, if it's not full rank, the system is not controllable. And what you'll find, an interesting aside, is if there is rank deficiency, then the amount of rank deficiency tells you how many uncontrollable modes you have in your system. What about the derivation of this controllability matrix? Now, the theoretical justification for this involves analysis which is beyond the remit of this video series. So we're only going to give a very brief insight here. And if you really want to know, you'll have to go and look at some more advanced textbooks. But what it comes down to is this. First of all, you need to be able to prove that this statement is always true. So if I take exponential of a matrix, so e to the a t minus tau, then I can always find um, some gamma i such that that's equal to this expression here. Now you'll notice the sum only goes from naught to n minus 1. And why is that useful? Because when I find the forced response for x, which is given by an expression like this, you'll see in that force response is this term e to the a t minus tor. So I can replace that by the corresponding gamma i t minus tor a to the i b. So I'm going to restate that here. And now we do another interesting point. We say, let's assume that I can define rho i as being this integral here. And you'll notice this integral is included in the definition of x, because I can take out the a to the i b, because they do not depend on time. Now, if I do that, what you find is that x of t reduces to this expression here. It reduces to the sum, from i equals 0 to n minus 1, of a to the i b times rho i of t. And that can then be rewritten using a matrix form as this controllability matrix times a vector of these rows. So now we get to the nub of the issue. So x of t is given by the controllability matrix times a vector of rows. So as long as these parameters rho i, which depend upon u of t, and u of t you can choose, can be chosen freely and independently of each other, and also if mc is full rank, then clearly I can choose x of t to be anything I like. But there's two assumptions there. One, rho i of t can be chosen freely, 
and 2 MC is full rank. Clearly, if MC is not full rank, then because X of T depends on it, I, I can no longer get any X of T I like, and so X of T is no longer fully controllable. So remark, these formula are not used to determine the U of T that you want. Rather, they use simply to establish that a U of T exists. It's, there's much more straightforward mechanisms for finding the U of T you want based upon feedback and other algebra. Some examples then. Is the following system controllable? And all you have to do is say, right, what's the controllability matrix? There it is, MC equals B, AB, A squared B, and so on. And for this particular case, because N is two, it's just going to be B comma A B. So there we go. I calculate it. And now we need to check the rank of MC. Now the easiest way to do this in the first instance is to check the determinant, because if the determinant is non-zero, it's going to be full rank. And this one is clearly full rank. Example two. Is the following system controllable? Well, again, we use exactly the same theorem. So you see, this time MC has got three terms because N is three. I've got B, AB, and A squared B. So I simply calculate those. There's the answer. You can see what M is. And then, because this is square, I calculate the determinant. I find the determinant is not zero. So M is full rank. So the system is fully controllable. Third example, is the following system controllable? So once again, I define my controllability matrix, MC equals B, A, B, A squared B. I plug in the numbers, and now I find that the determinant is zero. And because the determinant is zero, so M is rank deficient, therefore the system is not fully controllable. Example four. What if a system is in control canonical form? So here's an example of a system in control canonical form. And you'll remember, we've got all these coefficients along the top row, and then we've got ones in the lower diagonal, and B has got a one followed by lots of zero. So that's the structure of our control canonical form. So is this system controllable? And what we're going to do is just calculate EMC and see what we get. And there's the reminder of what the MC is. It's B, A, B, A squared, B, and so on. So first of all, there's B. We know that. It's 1, 0, 0, 0. And now I'm going to calculate A, B. And what do you notice about A, B? You'll notice it's got two terms in the top two rows, and then it's all zeros. Next, I'm going to calculate A squared, B. And what do you notice about A squared, B? It's got three terms and then it's all zeros. And now I'm going to do a cubed b. And what you notice here? It's got four terms, and then it's all zeros. So where's the key observation? This mc, when you calculate it, is going to be upper triangular. And because it's upper triangular, it must be full rank. And therefore, you're, if you're in control canonical form, you must be fully controllable. Now, final question, is the following system controllable? Now, this is clearly far too tedious to do by hand, so we can use MATLAB. And this one, because we've got four states, you'll notice we've got a, a B, an AB, an A squared B, and an A cubed B. And there's the answer. And you'll notice in this particular case, what I've done, because it's getting rather messy, I've said, let's use the rank statement in MATLAB. And this has come back and told me that the rank is 4. So it's full rank, and therefore the system is controllable. Some asides. MATLAB does have sh some shortcuts which you might want to use. So it's got a built-in function to find this matrix. And this is called ctrb.m. And you can see that's sort of short for controllability. So here I've illustrated how you use that. You just write CTRB A comma B, and it will give you this matrix MC, this controllability matrix. And a final remark. If a system is uncontrollable, then the associated transfer function will have a cancelling 
pole zero pair because the input is unable to excite at least one of the modes in the system and therefore this mode cannot appear in the input output relationship so it's got to be cancelled out somewhere it's going to appear in the denominator because the denominator comes with a number of poles equal to the number of states so the associated mode has to be cancelled so here's an example this example you remember example 3 was uncontrollable and it had three states if I find the associated transfer function and here's the expression SI minus A inverse times B what you'll notice is there's three poles I've got an S minus 1 factor an S minus 2 factor and an S minus 3 factor but if I now look at the numerator you find every single numerator factor here has got an S minus 1 so the S minus 1 mode is going to cancel out because in this particular case that was the uncontrollable mode now you might hear the terminology sometimes that a state space model is in non-minimal form and this is an example of one that's in non-minimal form because it has this cancelling pole zero pair so in summary we've introduced the concept of the controllability matrix and we've shown or stated that a system is controllable if the matrix is full rank and that's how the matrix is written b a b a squared b all the way up to a to the n minus 1 b we've given some numerical examples and showed that if you're in control canonical form then you're always fully controllable in general the computation of this matrix is rather tedious and finding the rank would also be tedious so you should do this on a computer